Hello, I just thought I'd show you um, how to make a fun little block. This is called spools because if you look at it, it kind of resembles a cotton reel or a cotton spool. Um, and I've used two and a half inch strips and squares to make it. And I've used a little stripe across the center here, which kind of indicates the thread if that's what it was going to be. And um, so I thought that was a fun little block. Um, of course, if you turn it that way, it kind of resembles almost a bow tie, but we're going with spools today. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to make that. As I said, it was with two and a half inch strips and squares. A lot of you will have a lot of those left over. I have done a video on how to cut two and a half inch strips and squares in case that interests anyone. It was Quilting Tips and Techniques 141. And I'm just going to show you now. So I've already cut mine out. So instead of just using squares all the way along and some half square triangles there, I've cut this end as a strip and this end. And then these are squares through the middle and squares that we've put on to form our diagonals there. So we, we had two of these for the spool. I'm making a green spool this time that are cut six and a half inch long by two and a half inches wide. And we need some two and a half inch squares of our background. We need if we're going to put a stripe in the middle, it doesn't have to be a stripe. You need one of those. So you need a total of six of the background two and a half inch squares, two strips two and a half inch by six and a half inch of your spool colour and one two and a half inch square for your thread in the middle. So in order to achieve this look I've got my two and a half inch squares of my background which in this case is the white because we're going to sew on those lines and I'll just quickly show you how I've done that. I've with my ruler, any ruler will work as long as you've got the half inch markings. I'm going to lay that so that it runs right through the diagonal and draw a line from point to point. And then I'm going to move the ruler across so that this mark that's half an inch in from the edge sits right over the top of that drawn line and draw another line that then is now half an inch away from the first drawn line. And we're going to sew on both of those lines. So I've already got my other one ready as well. And so now we're going to position these because we want our angles to come in this way, both of them, we need to position it so that when we sew it, we want that long line there and the shorter line to the outside so that when that flips over, you'll end up, we have two of these, we just turn one the other way. So both of them end up looking exactly the same. So you need to pop your triangle on there and sew your, your long line. So we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll sew both lines because we're just going to keep the other corner. So while I'm here I'll do the other sewing line. Now if you have, were doing um, quite a few of these blocks of course you could chain piece these through. Today I'm just showing you on one. So I've drawn both my lines there. Sorry, sewn both my drawn lines there. Um, and now I'm going to come back and put the other one on. So this you've got to make sure this other one goes on in the right direction. So basically we're coming into a V. So you want that so that your line, this line has come in that way and this one's coming in that way. And now we're going to go back to the machine and sew that line. All those lines. And we'll come back and do the other line while we're here. The reason I'm doing this second line of sewing is because I'm going to keep those corners because we actually trim them off but I thought it would be good not to waste them. So what I'm going to do now is cut between my two sewing lines. So I'm going to lay my ruler down so that a quarter inch marker sits right over the long diagonal line and I'm going to cut halfway between the two sewing lines. And take that bit away turn it round and do the same this way. So make sure you're cutting off the bit with the sewing on it, not the other bit. 
because these bits here which we don't really need well we don't need for this quilt unless you use them somewhere else by doing an extra sewing line you've got another little half square triangle ready for another project but for this project we've got these and look it works they match I'll just give those a quick press and I'm pressing this into the color because I'm using a white background But I would tend to do it that way anyway, because the spool in my mind is kind of sitting in front of the background, I would probably press it so that the spool was kind of in front. I don't know if that makes sense. Now we're going to join our piece in the middle. So I want the stripe going that way, because to me that's the thread going around the spool. And this is just joining up a row of three squares. So we'll quickly do that. And so you can see this is a quite a fun quick block and you as I said you may have left over two and a half inch strips and squares from other projects you could make a few blocks with some of them or you can cut your own and I'm very often cutting my own so that the seam goes into that middle bit and that should now fit there and there and it does so now we've just got to join up those bits and we're nearly done you could chain piece these and now I'll just join my next seam on there and pressing as you go is really helpful it helps everything sit nice and flat and make sure things are fitting nicely having a good quarter inch seam allowance is always helpful things so that everything kind of meets where it should always a little bit of a mystery as to whether it's meeting where it should or not until we've pressed it. Yes, we're looking pretty good. Now I'm going to press both of these into the middle. Because of, because of this diagonal seam coming in, it just creates a little bit more bulk and it will want to naturally sit that way. So there's no point fighting the fabric with a little thing like that. The seams behind the white are going to show anyway, although they don't seem to show once everything's all quilted in. So there's our spool block. There's the one I already had. And to put them together, you could. there's lots of things you can do. You can turn them around so that they're alternating. You could do rows of them so that you would get this sort of row coming in and out, going up and down in rows. Uh, lots of things to play with. Uh, there so that's the spool block as I said it measures six and a half inches it'll be six inches finished and I have just done a small quilt here with some very grey looking spools we were having a grey day that day obviously uh, but you can see here I've just I have alternated so this is my spool block and here I've turned it round so I've just joined up nine of these blocks alternating the direction of them and I've got kind of black and white and grey but I've kept my stripe in the center and I've done that around the binding I thought that was quite fun uh, these stripes and dots and things that are around these days are so much fun to play with so happy spooling <laughs>